For session two, we have amongst us Professor Dr. T. V. Subha Rao, Professor Emeritus Vivekanand School of Law and Legal Studies, Delhi. Former Professor, National Law School of India, University, Bangalore. Sir is considered as a good teacher, able ed, uh, academician, and efficient administrator. Professor Rao made marked contribution in rationalizing and strengthening the administrative reforms and system in the universities in which he worked. He has been instrumental in facilitating the university's access to find to fund under various scheme of UGC and other agencies. He held many many academic, administrative, and supervisory posts in the university system across India. In recognition of his valuable work as a teacher and researcher, Professor Rao has been conferred with state award for teachers by government of Andhra Pradesh in 1999-2000. Professor Rao has specialized knowledge in constitutional law, international law, human rights, family law, ancient Indian law, and law relating to cyber crimes. He is a prolific writer and his zeal for academics is evident through his work and publications. He has good number of publications to his credit. He has written books, various books, edited various books, authored uh, books, 25, uh, written 25 articles and 23 research papers. His works are often quoted. He has organized 41 conferences, seminars, workshops, training programs, across uh, universities. He was a resource person trainer in 108 seminars, symposium, conferences, workshops, and training programs. We are honored to have you, sir, amongst us. We welcome you, sir. Thank you. I would like to tell you a few things about role of the teacher in general. I salute our fellow teachers who were able to impart knowledge of law through synchronous, asynchronous, or blending or hybrid methods during normal as well as during difficult times of COVID. My friends, legal education in one of the he rather is one of the disciplines that was vitally affected as the practical orientation had become a ritualistic formality during the COVID period. It is not an exaggeration, my friends. It requires what happened in these two years for legal education, a research work is required. Friends, always a teacher if he is a real guru, he is considered to be personification of knowledge. Kevalam jnanam urtim. On uh, September 5th, generally we will make a, a small ritualistic function wherein we recite Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwara, even without going into the details of the meaning of it. It is not as if, like Vishnu and Brahma, he stands with all these things, paraphernalia. It is not like that, my friends. He is equated with Brahma because he creates that inquisitiveness and urge for knowledge. And then he sustains that knowledge. That is why he is compared to Vishnu. And then he will show the goal to reach the ultimate knowledge. That is why he is called Maheshwara. But after that, they have used the expression Parabrahma, that is ultimate truth. My friends, I always used to tell, truth is only one station you reach. There are series of other stations. In order to reach ultimate truth, you will have to cross several stations. So hence, my friends, the role of the teacher, even his silence will tell several things. 
Maun of Vyakya Prakitatam that is we have noted in Dakshinamurti Sloka. India has a rich culture of respecting the teachers. Even God incarnate had Guru. You must have read Ramayana and Mahabharata at least in gist. One should see the role of teachers. Look at, for example, in Ramayana, Vasishta has given basic knowledge about everything to Ram and every other brothers of Ram. But the personality development was conducted by Vishwamitra, Sage Vishwamitra. And during the war, Agastya came, just imparted Aditya Hurdava and went away. They know that the consequences he is going to win. So they did not wait for till that time, Aditya Hurdava. So specifically they have come and imparted the knowledge. While imparting the knowledge, our teachers never treated students inferior. It was always a partnership of learning. Om Sahana Otu Sahara Bunaku Sahaviriam Karavahi. They is to now Vinita Bastu Mavit Vishawahi, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. It is only a Shanti mantra not directed against any particular God, but God in general, and both the teacher and the taught, they pray together as partners to extra energize them to reach the ultimate goal of the knowledge. So that was the respect, that was the thing which one should remember. A teacher affects eternity. He can never tell where the influence stops. Henry Adams has stated, my dear friends, I should tell you, whether good or bad, it is the teacher who invites, if you can see the children, kids going to the school, even if the teacher says wrong, if you wanted to correct, they won't listen, they will say their teacher is correct. That is the influence a teacher has. In fact, my friends, the seeds of Second World War were sown in the classrooms of Germany by the teachers who were admirers of Adolf Hitler. That is why Bertrand Russell has stated, teachers are more than any other class, the guardians of civilization. Even our new education policy, as well as Kothari Commission previously, they said that the destiny of any nation is shaped in the classrooms. The teacher truly shapes the future of our children and therefore the future of our nation, that is new education policy. My dear friends, the oft-quoted adage or oft-quoted thing I would like to remind you once again, a mediocre teacher tells, a good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, the great teacher inspires. Where do we stand? We will have to assess ourselves. For that, this William Arthur Watts quotation I have given you. For that purpose, always one should be a lighted candle in himself or herself, the teachers. If they are not lighted candles in themselves, they cannot lit the flame in others, the students. A teacher should always treat himself or herself as a student only, preparing, developing, and explaining, and expanding the horizons of knowledge. Teaching, my dear friends, is purposive, inspiring, interpersonal activity of learning. It is a purposive one, inspiring one, interpersonal activity of learning between the teacher and the taught. Okay, my friends, a teacher is also a facilitator of learning. 
It is not coercive methods that work, not teacher centric things. One should understand that teacher is a facilitator of learning. The second thing is that he must act as diagnostician of learners' needs. He is a motivating force that is more important. He is the best person for analyzing the behavioral patterns of the students and ultimately impartially he must act as an evaluator. My dear friends, attention is different from motivation. Mind it. Attention is different from motivation. Suppose somebody enters into room, automatically your attention is paid. But that is not motivation. Motivation is something extra energizing to keep the students in that paradigm of teaching and learning thing. In every classroom, this is also important for constitutional law teachers as well. Three types of students will be there. Three types of students. Number one, first category will be mastery oriented students. Proficiency, competency and mastery oriented students. They have breath taking potential as well. They will not keep quiet. They will not allow teachers also to rest. If they have a doubt, till the doubt is clear, they will not rest. They will not keep quiet. So these are the persons proficiency oriented with them. There is no problem. Definitely the name and fame of the teachers and institutions will grow because of these teachers, rather students. There are other types of students. These are compromising students or failure avoiding students. This group of students, they wanted to pass the examination somehow or other. They didn't want to have grip over the subject or knowledge over the subject. They want only some information to rather write in the examinations, 30 questions at a glance is enough for them. Okay, this is second type of students. There is another group. The, uh, these are what you call failure accepting students. They open the book of jurisprudence. They are not able to understand anything. So they think that anyway we will fail. We will write supplementary exam. These are a failure accepting students. These are all most dangerous to the, not only for themselves, dangerous for others also. In the sense that they will can spoil compromising or failure avoiding students into failure accepting students and proficiency oriented students to failure avoiding students like that in everybody's life during the time of when they are studying in a college, they will know all these things. So the role of the teacher is to see that there are no failure accepting students in their classroom. As I have told you, the role of the teacher as a diagnostician, all these things we have told you. So he will have to see that the failure accepting become failure avoiding students and failure avoiding students become mastery oriented students. My dear friends, one formula is there which you should remember. That formula is that when the student is entering into the classroom, what is his entry behavior? That is, what is his knowledge when he is entering into the classroom? And then after the classroom is over, class is over, 
What is his terminal behavior? Terminal behavior. That is how much knowledge he has acquired. Terminal behavior minus entry behavior is benefit accrued. If benefit accrued is zero, we are failures as teachers. He is failure as a student. So terminal behavior minus entry behavior is benefit accrued. For this purpose, for this purpose, my dear friends, a credo has to be observed. Especially it is peculiar for law, not only for constitutional law, any field of, any, any discipline of law. That is update, upgrade and enrich. If you do not update the knowledge, what we read in 1950-51, A.K. Gopalan's case would, would be no of you, not of much use now. After Maneka Gandhi's case, how things have changed. After privacy case, how it is further modified, all these things. So update the knowledge, upgrade the knowledge, and enrich your knowledge by thorough reading and discussions and all these things. Credo is update, upgrade, and enrich. You should be a lighted candle in yourself. If you are not a lighted candle, you will not be able to lead the candle of the students. They are already motivated. That is why they have joined the college. It is your role to impose extrinsic motivation on the students. This is the background, my friends. In general, I wanted to give, not peculiar only to teaching constitutional law. Now we will go to teaching constitutional law. Okay. Number one, not everybody will get an opportunity to teach constitutional law. Is it not? Not everybody will get an opportunity to teach constitutional law. If you get an opportunity, no doubt that you will have to work. Hard work is required. Opportunity to teach constitutional law is an exciting and challenging experience. It would be like an intellectual feast. A lay person will become a legal expert. Coming to the Indian constitution, you can see, my dear friends, we know the limitations. Indian constitution stood by the test of the times, more than 72 years of its existence. It has faced many challenges and onslaughts. There were attempts to subvert the constitution. It sustained grievous injuries. It is amended 105 times till now at the rate of one and a half amendments per year. It has seen many phases of the post-Indian constitutional developments. Maybe it is interpretive analogy. What we had in 1950 is different constitution in its content. What we have now is different in its content. It facilitated mixed economy in the beginning. Then all of a sudden we thought of nationalization and socialist economy. It facilitated it. Now we are going through the fifth age of globalization and privatization. It is facilitating that also, my dear friends. It is a living document. It is a live wire. Constitution is, as I have told you, almost every day you can see in the newspapers, 
they speak about the constitution constitutional niceties also they speak sometimes wrongfully very famous newspaper also recently instead of saying article 14 rather instead of saying article 15 it stated article 14 thus constitution is different from other subjects that is what i wanted to tell when i am because not because i am a teacher of constitutional law there are two irreducible minimum subjects that every law teacher must to know what are those two things number 1 jurisprudence number 2 constitutional law teachers may opt to teach any subject but their gumption their alacrity cannot ignore the field of constitutional law even if you are a teacher of economics sociology engineering medicine not only our subjects like torts contracts or anything you take the imprints of constitutional law will be there the reason is that my friends as granville austin in his famous book on indian constitution cornerstone of a nation if you have not already read that book read it it will be like small book it is gives very good background granville austin indian constitution cornerstone of a nation he said indian constitution is first and foremost a social document the core commitment of social revolution lies in part 3 and part 4 of the constitution in the fundamental rights and directive principles of the state policy they are the conscience of the constitution the fundamental rights and directive principles they had their roots deep in the struggle of independence and they were included in the constitution with a hope and expectation that one day the tree of true liberty would bloom in india so that was the expectation about the constitution that is the importance of the constitution for teaching such a subject definitely you must remember that credo which i have told you i give you my dear friends an inclusive list of nine steps inclusive step rather list of nine steps why i am saying inclusive steps teaching is individualistic i may have some other idea also you may have some other idea also they are number 1 first of all when you take up teaching constitutional law decide not only constitutional even other subjects also whether it is a learner centric or curriculum centric approach or sometimes it is teacher centric also so the first thing to decide is whether it is a learner centric or curriculum centric the second one is that set objectives of the teaching constitutional law objectives of teaching constitutional law that is why we are teaching constitutional law if you put question why those who have read A research methodology, social research methodology, Paul Winnie Young book. They give seven questions in order to formulate research design. The second question is why. If you put a question why, automatically you will get the objectives and purposes for which you are making that particular research. Similarly, when you are teaching constitutional law, you must know why you are teaching. Set the objectives. said the objective is not that easy my dear friends i will come to it one by one and then third one 
Yaval, your own, or imposed one, evaluate that course content. Yaval and evaluate the course content that is the third one. When you are teaching constitutional law, you will have many challenges. while dealing with constitutional law i will tell what these things are some examples i will give and then keeping in view these four things eval suitable strategy and method of teaching after taking up method of teaching or adopting strategy some strategy you will have to think of integrating ict this is ict only what we are doing now one more task for constitutional law teacher is that suggesting the reference books and material it is not an easy task and then evaluation methods when say say evaluation methods you may think that you are evaluating students not only that you will have to evaluate yourself as a teacher of constitutional law and for every classroom teaching you will have to prepare a blueprint of teaching a blueprint of teaching an instructional plan of teaching these are the nine steps my dear friends once again i tell you decide whether it is a learner centric or curriculum centric approach number 2 set the objectives of teaching number 3 evaluate and evaluate course content number 4 assess the challenges one may face in dealing with constitution evolve suitable method of teaching and then integrate ict suggest reference books and material decide on the evaluation methods and prepare blueprint of instructional plan certain things i will try to rather exemplify further what is the step 1 decide whether it is a learner centric or curriculum centric approach one needs to adopt so once you say it is learner centric it doesn't mean we ignore curriculum it is not like that here the teacher's role is to facilitate learning by the students utilizing their interest their unique needs it is not free for all my dear friends it will be ordered by the teacher but the encouragement would be based upon socratic method coupled with some case study method real socratic method is not there anywhere in the world classical socratic method it is coupled with or modified a variant of socratic methods are there okay we will come to that later on coupled with the case study method can be applied it will be learner centric but when you are working under a university you will have to complete the portion within the time framework so essentially you are bothered about covering the syllabus don't call it as curriculum at that time so what to cover what not to cover is dictated by your curriculum your private syllabus will not be there you are not free 
you are conditioned so if you put like a triangle those who are in white paper can write triangle curriculum on one side learner on the other side teacher on the other side that interaction will be there if there is an interaction directly towards curriculum teacher curriculum it is curriculum based and then teacher and learner it is learner based okay this is what we only has to think number 2 second step objectives of teaching constitutional law whatever may be the syllabus or whatever may be specification of curriculum this much has to be completed there are certain minimum things that have to be imparted to the student did your teacher ever tell you what are the goals and values of the constitution what are the goal values of the constitution what are the instrumental values of the constitution of course that are reflected in the preamble itself justice social economic and political they are and then liberty of thought expression belief faith and faith and worship equality of status and of opportunity fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and unity and integrity of the nation these are the goal values of the constitution that we wanted to achieve to achieve those things we will have to travel some means some instrument is required that instrument is sovereign socially secular democratic republic my dear friends it is democratic republic not democracy comma republic as we have interpreted it is not correct democratic republic it is so you have chosen that path sovereign socially secular democratic republic path in order to reach the goals so you explain goals and values in that terms just not just simply saying whether preamble is a part of the constitution or not what are the various terms and their meaning you can never define equality you can never define justice that is different aspect altogether so goals and values and then you may have to explain what is constitution constitutional law understand and then constitutionalism while dealing with constitutionalism you may touch upon the recent developments of transformative constitutionalism there are other angles also it depends upon the level of the student positive constitutionalism and negative constitutionalism authoritative constitutionalism all these things are there again constitutionalism constitution constitutional law these three things minimum one should note before entering into the actual subject of the constitution so that is one of the objectives you have to remember and then historical background is required why so many restrictions have come because fundamental rights were framed based upon the perpetuation of fundamental wrongs during the time of partition some restrictions were there which are now irrelevant why then there is equality clause under article 14 specifically we have 15 16 17 and 18 because of historical reasoning untouchability is abolished and practice of untouchability in any of its forms is punishable in accordance with the law so historical background to me always it appears that granville austin's book is ultimate in this angle and then see that the students have 
crash over bare provisions of the constitution friends do not call bare act of the constitution no it is bare text of the constitution acts are made under the constitution okay bare text of the constitution so let the student have the grasp over the provisions first and then how to apply to the rules to the new patterns how do you go about it application part of it it is experiential learning that is moot courts you will go here mock trials we are not bothered much moot court aspects and then you will have to think about how seemingly minor changes if the facts of the case change the decision you may not be remembering my friends the old timers your principal subramanya may remember there were two cases anwarali sarkar versus state of west bengal khati rani rawat versus state of saurashtra same set of facts in fact they were heard together subsequently gujarat government wanted to file separate affidavit so it was decision was given separately same number of judges same judges but the opinion in saurashtra's case is different from anwar ali sarkar's case the reason is priyambul preamble of special courts act in the state of west bengal case was different it was vague whereas it was detailed in saurashtra's case that is the only example so but seemingly minor change preamble ordinarily we will not give weight to it how many of us would have read preamble of indian contract act indian evidence act or other acts only government of india act of 1935 did not contain any preamble other acts will have preamble but nobody is bothered about it but here the preamble made an impact so certain niceties we will have to bring to the notice of the students you will also tell about how the principle of law of torts is brought into constitutional law in sri ram fertilizers case mc mehta versus union of india and then you will have to give fundamentals of what is judicial review what is activism dynamism and nowadays judicial overreach judicial usurpation judicial restraint all these things have to be explained in other words judicial craftsmanship and strategies will include all those things you will have to give them a bit of idea at llb level and advanced analysis if it is llm and then constitution is not an isolated subject as i was telling you there will be close interaction with other disciplines for example is india a parliamentary system or not myself and professor vijay kumar the vice chancellor of nlu bhopal we used to fight on that i used to say even though it is not totally based upon westminster model still india is a parliamentary type but he used to tell it is classical presidential type based upon pb mukherjee's book so it is political science mostly you will have to think about similarly you will have gender perspective feminist jurisprudence you said so different things history political science gst 
economics. So, an analysis of these things are required. That is one of the objectives, my friends. And then, international perspective. In many countries, if country duly enters into a convention or an agreement or a treaty, it becomes part of the law of the land. But in India, unless a law is passed by the parliament in pursuance of that convention, it will not become law of the land. Article 253, how far? Rather, the objectives of CEDA were incorporated, refugee problem, CAA, all these things, they have international implications. So for that matter, it is very dangerous, suppose if you enter without knowing fundamentals of that, those subjects. You must have rudiments of those subjects also. You will have to tell another thing to the students, my dear friends. <coughs> Plurality of opinions. You say, majority opinion you can say, unanimous you can say, but if there is a difference, concurrent opinion, dissenting opinion, how dissenting opinions of today have become majority opinions tomorrow, how in privacy case, previous cases were overruled. These things, this is one of the objectives that you will have to mention. Definitely, if you are a constitutional law teacher, you will have to touch upon the latest case law, recent constitutional developments. For us, of course, you must be telling in your classroom, Saya Singhal case, Joseph Shine, Nautay Singh, Saira Banu, Shabari Malai, of course, it is referred to the larger, larger bench, Puttu Swami's case, Anuradha Bhasin's case, Babu Puniya, that, what is that? Babita Puniya's case, and then Lieutenant Colonel Nitasha's case recently, which has given equal place for women in selections for army permanent commission okay all these things you must be rather not merely aware of you must go through that is additional responsibility of a constitutional teacher case comment on contemporary issues one has to do it is not an easy thing my dear friends Constitutional law can be taught just like a doctrinal subject. That means you give provision, you give cases over as ordinary textbook like. But it can also be taught with experiential learning by means of discussion in the classroom. But one thing which you should remember is that very careful about it. Whatever may be your opinion, you write it in your articles. But you will have to maintain value neutrality in the class. I may have my own opinion. In a private discussion, I may criticize certain things. But the thing is that when you are in the classroom, you should try to maintain value neutrality over the controversial issues. Scholarly, critical approach is always rather welcome in the classroom. Not only that, wherever that is possible, analogous opinions can be taken into account, orient the students about the policy making and their impact on the decisions. For example, Visaka's case, how it has influenced the formulation of legislation, of course, all these things one has to undergo by friends. The third step now, evolve or evaluate course content. How do you evolve and evaluate course content? You must have heard the word 
pedagogy actually freely our people are using it pedagogy is a discipline by itself that deals with theory and practice of education how best to teach what are the instructive strategies okay so pedagogy is also linked with evaluation and evolving the course content when you are evaluating course content you may have the role for that but you cannot evolve course content because you are not the person prescribing the syllabus and all these things what you should understand is that there is a difference between curriculum and syllabus nowadays we use the expression course outline also syllabus is the more rather mere specification of subject to be covered curriculum includes goals behind prescribing particular item particular subject constitutional developments are always in flux at the time when you frame the syllabus things may be different by the time it comes to the classroom it may be different so the curriculum the goal of the syllabus is that you shall always be abreast of these things and you must know the purpose for which it is made curriculum prescribes even for a unit or sub unit the goal to be achieved that is curriculum otherwise it is only mere specification of rather subject topics that is one thing the fourth one is assess the challenges in the dealing with the class twinning everyday happenings happen in the constitutional law class they will read the newspaper they will ask the doubts that is the first challenge for a constitutional law teacher and also that in the classroom teaching the students do not know they may even rather start criticizing the attitude of the supreme court of course it is not a contempt of court academic rather activity okay there is no constitutional law without politics that is why it is an everyday challenge politics influence the discussion sociological aspects influence the decision migrant laborers suo moto cases were taken up are they not constitutional constitutional issues so when you are having classroom discussion several ch challenges will be there so what is required is that you may have to go through the judgments from 50 to middle 60s from then onwards there is another change and afterwards the present day changes in fact my friends i should tell you the judgments that were delivered during 1965 to 78 till maneka gandhi's case came people started criticizing books were also written supreme court is in politics god save the honorable supreme court like that jurists have written books that is supreme court gave an impression that itself was in politics and there is growing intolerance towards judiciary as well my friends so these challenges will have to overcome in the classroom another challenge in the classroom will be there will be errors in the drafting of the constitution how do you explain it when it is question one error i would like to tell you is that what is 15 class 1 those who are constitutional law teachers here can very easily recite
state shall not discriminate against any citizen on the grounds only of religion race caste sex place of birth or any of them agreed at least you can nod your heads na even though sound is switched off religion race caste sex place of birth or any of them you can have this uh, audio there is no problem we can discuss if there are any doubts also we can ask okay now sex is a prohibited ground prohibited marker under uh, 15 class 1 go to 15 class 3 nothing in this article shall prevent the state from making any special provision for women and children sex is a prohibited marker so there is an enabling provision saying that woman is an exceptional one special measures can be made agreed but age is not a prohibited ground why should they mention about children for women we understand why children that is not necessary actually but the thing is that as a matter of precaution are their concern towards children it has been included that is our answer that may not be satisfactory for the children but it will be the answer and another thing is that it has used from article 301 to 307 those who are constitutional law teachers can read those articles you will see find for yourself how defective drafting was perpetuated 301 to 307 trade commerce and intercourse and then article 13 refers to law in force or existing law and the court says ah there is no difference between these two but actually there would be difference so this type of challenges you may come across as i have told you sensitive issues also may come up relevancy of the problems the student sometime asks what is the use of knowing all these cases is there any linkage when between modern developments and these case la you give a question from articles 5 to 11 how it is relevant now the student will ask these questions like that articles 5 to 11 they deal with citizenship at the commencement of the constitution those who are alive at that time might not have been there now even if they are there they must be very old so certain challenges like that relevancy of the problem of course it is relevant in the sense that citizenship concept and domicile all these things are derived from that another thing is that another doubt of the students under article 141 a decision given by the supreme court shall be binding on all other courts is it not but even after the decision is given why cases are filed on the under the same section what is the recent example my dear friends section 66a of information technology act which was struck down in the case of shreya singhal is it not so not only shreya singhal's case even dk basu's case was not followed properly so these are the things that challenges you cannot enumerate all but definitely these are the things that will be there 
the fifth step is that yavalu appropriate method of teaching yaval appropriate method of teaching teaching is an an act of will i say teaching is an art and it is individualistic no two teachers will be alike my my dear friends constitutional law one taught by one teacher constitutional law two taught by another teacher these two teachers will be different both may be very good also teaching is an act of will and it is individualistic always it is like providing an opportunity to the students to learn how best particular method is useful jocularly jocularly i used to tell sell tell a bad teacher will be an effective teacher how it will be a bad teacher may be an effective teacher the reason is that if he is a bad teacher the student has to consult other teachers or go to the library it becomes their own they work very hard that is only a joke i am telling i tell you my friends even the best curriculum and most perfect syllabus remains a dead letter unless quickened into life by the right methods of teaching by right kind of teacher method is the means of reaching the predetermined ends this one should remember the biggest challenge for a teacher especially constitutional teacher is that to choose appropriate method of teaching method and presentation of a lesson depends on the nature of the subject and the tact of the teacher <coughs> excuse me and then you must have heard number of methods lecture method that is we adopt no replacement for that so far socratic method very often our people socratic method we have adopted what is that case method case study method problem solving method observation method conversational method assignment method clinical method like that there are 150 methods my friends previously only few methods were there now they say that hybrid everything is hybrid like lecture method is very fundamental for us most popular commonly used and indispensable method you cannot dispense with lecture method till now we are predominantly adopting the same method it is teacher controlled my dear friends students are listeners what will happen if they are listeners even if mahatma gandhi or other great orators come within 20 minutes we will switch off we will switch off our mind goes to certain things that are happening with our friends or home or some cinema or something like that again we will try to come back that is major problem with regard to lecture method but it is harsh in reality nobody can totally jet the sun or throw it it is generally coupled with other methods prolonged lecture like this present lecture is not advocated 20 25 minutes then there should be a questioning or some discussion or some cracking of jokes it is not as if the teacher doesn't have any other work or 
forgot about the subject matter he is cracking the jyoti it is not like that to bring you back to the classroom paradigm certain motivating things have to be adopted while doing so no discrimination should be there always speaking one particular student to answer others are ignored in their heart they will feel if you put question they will be nervous but if you ignore them definitely they will feel so in an aspect of motivation is required in so far as this method is concerned case study method it relates to in depth study of a particular aspect it may be a real one it may be an ima imaginary one they are analyzed way back in 1826 this type of inter interaction was brought into the classrooms by langdell this also is associated with quizzing case study method even research methodology will adopt na in depth study of a particular thing okay in classroom discussion it can be used and then problem based learning give a problem from 60s onwards especially in law schools even though it has originated in canada this has become a successful one give a problem to the students let them have open discussion let them peep into others notes also there is no problem but they will solve the problem in the process i used to tell my friends in my classroom two things are contagious in the classroom not only in the classroom even in the meetings also what are those two things number one sleep if a person sitting by your side started sleeping you will also get sleep so sleep is contagious second thing is that writing notes even if there is no important point suppose you were bench mate starts writing you will also have to start writing even though there is no point in it both the things are contagious both the things are not good taking class notes why it is not good your concentration will be on writing the content of writing you may rather miss the point of discussion so whatever you read it must be after or prior to the class not during the class that is problem solving learning that is one method role play in recent times in the law schools you could see if you are working in a private university setup they will ask you to conduct one role play even for legal aid so constitutional issues by role play you can make okay when arresting a person what are the safeguards have to be observed all these things meaningful we can be depicted and then clinical legal education is there this has received beatings during covid period even though on record we have seen shown that we have conducted effectively clinical legal education it was not good clinical legal education very much canvassed by professor madhav meenan as well he is the best suited method for law schools it is like a practical training you are making a lawyer in the law school itself a litigative practitioner you are in the law school itself you are preparing them so after law school is over automatically they will be good lawyers even though 
we are now doing it as a ritualistic formality there is a chinese proverb my dear friends chinese proverb it says i hear and i forget i see and i remember i do it i understand it so clinical legal education you do it you will understand it if you hear after some time you will forget if you see if it is interesting you will remember movies you remember not classroom teachings but when you are part of it when you do it you understand it that is a wonderful aspect my dear friends now coming to the crucial aspect socratic method my dear friends i told you there is no where in the world even though they claim they have adopted socratic method classical socratic method is not there it is coupled with something else it is cooperative argumentative dialogue between individuals by asking questions answering questions and then ultimately they may not reach any solution also it may lead to fighting also even the person the source of the socratic method attributed to socrates of 40 fourth century bc he was a victim of the same it is also called method of elenchus elenctic method as such for example questions and answers i will give you one example lie is sinful so you argue based upon that you may say starting saying that yes lie is sinful but sometimes to a person who is terminally ill would you go and say, tell him that you are going to die within 5 minutes will you say that even if you come to the mythological discussions in india satyam bruyat priyam bruyat na bruyat satyam apriyam yaksha prashnas were there the answers were given by yudhishthir so these are all the basis for arguments ultimately you may not receive even the answer it is like hypotheticals hypothesis it is a tentative generalization you make the veracity of which may be proved or disproved and in socratic method always it is condemned okay classical socratic method is a different my dear friends probing questions into philosophy that is not law as such okay confusion is created which is also called as aporia but the modern variant of socratic method is welcome it goes with knowledge agenda teacher knows it then he initiates questions and answers there nobody knows here teacher knows is it not with knowledge agenda teacher knows and teacher starts questioning at random he will start in the classroom sometimes this may lead to problem also in identifying the student choosing the student for the purpose of may hurt others that is also there but meaningfully my dear friends this variant of socratic method that is adopted in legal education relates to clubbing it with case study method case study method cold call is given to the students but at the same time the teacher will know and it is specific analysis in depth study can be made by the variants of socratic method okay issues of poverty unemployment migrant laborers 
are well suited for this type of discussion my dear friends okay one thing you should understand is that for individual study if it takes one hour for group discussion it takes 45 minutes for class discussion it is half an hour so always encourage class discussion my friend my dear friends there is one method you may try to adopt it in your schools that is cooperative teaching we have adopted it in national law school of india university bangalore myself professor mallar professor vijay kumar we used to go to the class on constitutional law we used to take different perspectives on the same topic sometimes even though the topic is for one hour we may go spill over for two hours like that apparent fighting will be there students will be divided for discussion it is a wonderful experience my dear friends afterwards i do not know what is happening but it was a wonderful thing cooperative teaching cooperative teaching is different from collaborative teaching collaborative teaching is that two or three teachers share the same subject each one talking talking uh, talking about you talk about article 14 equality i will talk about article 21 you talk about minority rights like that they divide but ultimately they they finish the syllabus this is collaboration cooperation on the same team same subject different perspectives those who are in the initial stages of now it is not seen the participants okay those who are there in the initial stage of teaching in the field of constitutional law may adopt what is known as micro teaching during mid 60s at stanford university dwight w allen has initiated and developed it this is a sort of teacher reviewing his own style of teaching if he has a new teacher for 10 minutes everything in capsule you deal with he has you assess yourself even before going to the class or some peer team may sit and then discuss that is also another advantage for new teachers okay there is another type of teaching flipped classrooms flipped f l i p flip if you rather take that spill spelling you will get the objective of this flipped classroom f stands for flexible environment l stands for learning culture i stands for content intentional content p stands for professional educator flipped classroom is that you are given the case or particular material to take it to home for homework it is given and that project or topic or whatever it may be that is completed by the students reading and all those things come to the classroom and start a discussion and closely it can be termed as bloom's taxonomy bloom's taxonomy before class you read remember and understand during class apply and analyze after class 
evaluate and creating the required for future required material for the future so this is the advantage of flipped classroom especially a critical analysis of the case can be meaningfully done in this aspect you know about inductive teaching deductive teaching bus group discussions these are all other types brainstorming sessions experiential learning as i have told you deliberately engaging and engineering the students in the process of learning contact this also i told you and then clinical legal education is a part of experiential learning also i think i have told you and then integrate ict that is an important aspect of it those who are in this field they can work on that also how to integrate information communication technology in the classroom paradigm okay in preparing the relevant material sharing the retained material and then this recorded classes all these things all these things you know but always it is unequal don't forget about it and then this integration of ict is only an adjective it is an it has an adjectival status to the classroom teaching nobody can say that it can substitute the classroom teaching it has its own limitations it is basically unequal one thing law teacher should know is that c a l r c a l r computer assisted legal research assisted legal research extensively used nowadays my dear friends especially by the researchers graduate and post graduate students for their research activities and it is a discipline by itself for teaching in some of the foreign universities catch k a t s h observed that a shift from print to electronic information technology provides the law with a new environment one that is less fixed less structured less stable and consequently more versatile and volatile that is the observation made computer assisted legal research has become very easy cut and paste and then run this computer software to know which one is copied then modify it paraphrase it and over and you will get an article over which you will not have any grip on one hand it is it facilitated lot of material is there you can have that material but at the same time it is also harmful that it has only has its limitations as i have told you technical glitches are there even with regard to online functioning of the government we have seen technical glitches are there even engineers face it even if you are a software engineer all of a sudden you must have seen your brothers or sisters or your friends sitting calmly and quietly in front of the computer working from home they say that there is some glitch server failure in one of the law examinations my dear friends clap few years back i was there in that i know it so 130 students came it has to be finished by a particular time but it took long time up to 8:30 9:30 we stayed in your bangalore only 
okay so it has its disadvantages but at the same time computer assisted legal research is a subject by itself somebody can work and write an article on that suggesting reference books and material seventh step i think so referring to source material on constitutional law is not that easy jain pande you can prescribe for your student like 30 questions at a glance also is there that is not the thing actually you must encourage the students to go to the source on important aspects refer to the reports scc ar or manupatra something like that you have all those things original things they may have to refer besides that constituent assembly debates shivaraus framing of the constitution volumes are there if they do not have time as i have told you it is like a novel wonderful book it is granville austin indian constitution cornerstone of a nation if you start reading it until it is finished you will not stop it very much interesting my friend my dear friends it is neither advisable nor possible to give specifically two or three books to be read one book is specialized in union state relations other book will be on fundamental rights yet another book on some other aspect it is like that in the market my dear friends for understanding we can start with bare text of gopal shankar narayan starting pm bakshi and then go for pandey then shukla then jain all these things but they are not sufficient and then decide on evaluation methods with regard to students evaluation you can do on your own and university prescribes but what about you peer review that is a must feedback is a must do you want yourself to be a rather not a good teacher we don't want that we should be mentioned that feedback that is below average so you decide how to evaluate yourself first then we will come to feedback by the others okay my dear friends the last one is and important one which you should very carefully hear and implement is what is the blueprint of teaching in a structural design it is logical orderly effective presentation of the subject matter will be possible if you have a blueprint of teaching if you want to construct a house you will have a blueprint brick by brick carefully you will keep and build a house it is like that you are building particular teacher taught paradigm very carefully that is vital for your career in the initial stages my friends there is no need to feel shy take a book and write this is what i am going to do as i have told you it gives you logical orderly effective presentation minimizes deviation increases your capacity of teaching it brings confidence and credo you will be able to do what is the credo upgrade update and enrich your knowledge that is the credo three principles and then you will be anticipating the students difficulties learning difficulties so what to do is there minimum framework 
for instructional design also many methods are there you can develop on your own also but there are certain minimum things that you allow to follow first of all what is the theme that you are going to cover in the classroom that is the first one title whatever you may call second thing is that nature of the class type of the class the things which you are teaching in llb you may not teach in llm or vice versa specialized training you are going going to give for llm students so type of the class write down no hesitation title type of the class time available on this count i am a total failure till now i start the class i do not know how to end it goes on like that now because of the age wisdom dawns when folds appear on the face that is the adage so people give respect and they keep quiet otherwise in those days when i was young other teachers used to stand outside the class reminding me the time is up the time is up like that so time frame available previous knowledge as i have told you entry behavior yesterday i have covered till till this point now we will have to cover from this point why you are doing objectives right fifth one teaching aids what is that you are using these are all different from teaching methods my dear friend teaching method is different from teaching tools for us what is the tool we suffer from chalk and talk syndrome is it not most of us chalk and talk over but what once you are in this field you will start improving what are the teaching aids and then you go for instructional procedure presentation starting with introduction stating the purpose why you are talking the taking that subject presentation teaching points important stress it treatment as i have told you several methods are there every teaching unit should shall have value orientation we teach for some purpose and then the next one is summing up and then whether the other persons followed it or not the students evaluation how do you evaluate it write down don't worry about that questions these questions i should ask so theme type of the class or nature of the class time available previous knowledge objectives teaching aids or tools instructional procedure summing up evaluation this is the instructional plan my dear friends you can improve on that it is like smooth to take off and safe landing not crash landing it should be like smooth to take off and safe landing every hour is like that already your